Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I want to show you guys how to create an SQL database in Java and how to query it in Java. So let's get started. The first thing I want you guys to do is to open up your IntelliJ, go to plugins, and get this plugin called Simple SQL Browser. You can get it on the marketplace here and I'll also have a link in the description. This will let us see our database in a nice view similar to how a spreadsheet works. Next step is we're going to actually create our project. So let's create a new project. Make sure we're using Maven. I'm using Java 17, but you guys can use whatever version it should work. For the name, I'm just going to call it SQL Demo YouTube and press create. Once everything is open, we're going to go to our palm.xml and then go to our browser. Inside our browser, you want to go to this link that's in the description and then copy this code right here. Make sure that you're on Maven. Now let's go back to our IDE. Inside of your IDE, you want to go down here, put a less than symbol, then dependencies, then press enter, and then control V to paste this in. Then we want to press this button up here that will actually generate things, and then click on Maven, and then click these two buttons. Once you have done that, we can now close this and go to our Java code. First thing to do is add our imports. So we're going to import these in. You guys can do this by hand or copy and paste it. All the code will be in the description. The next step is that we're going to create a connect method that will do our connecting for us. We're going to remove this and actually just write connect here like this. And then we're going to hold our mouse over this, go over here, more actions, and create a method. Now you can write this out by hand if you want, but I'm just using the tools that are here for me. Next, we need a string URL for our actual URL for where our database is going to be. It starts off with this right here that's always the same. And then our name of our database, .db. This is the file extension. You always need this. Next, we're going to do the actual connection part. So we're going to write try, make a try statement, use a connection object to create a connection with our URL. Then we're going to check if it's not no. In that case, that means it has been created successfully. So we're going to print this out. And of course, if we have any issues, we're just going to put a catch on there. Now let's try this out by running our code. As you guys can see, it says connected to the database in our console. And if we see here, we actually got a sample.db. And if we double click this, it'll open it up with our plugin that we got. Of course, there's nothing in here because we just created the database, but we haven't actually put anything inside of it. So let's do that now. Let's create another method called create new table. And we're just going to create it using our tools like before. Also remember, every time you start your code, you always need this connect method right here so we can actually connect to that database. That way your code knows what database it's doing things with. First of all, we need our URL like the same as before. Then we need our query. So we're going to write SQL create table if not exists. So it creates a table if it doesn't exist already. And then we're going to call it users and have three things inside of that table. We're going to have an ID for each user, their name, and our email. This is not an SQL tutorial, so I'm not going to be explaining this very in depth. You guys should know this or you guys can figure this out. The next step is that we're going to have to actually execute this SQL query right here. So we're basically creating this object here for an SQL statement. Then we're writing the method execute on it and we're putting in our SQL code right here. If that goes successfully, it'll print out table created. If anything wrong happens, it'll print out an error. Now, since we have this in our main method already, we can just run the code. Let's go. It said table created. So we're going to close this up here and then we're going to reopen it. And you guys can see we actually got a table unlike before. ID, name, and email, but it's empty. So let's put some stuff in there. Let's create the method and inside we're going to give a name and we're going to give an email. Now if we hover over this, we can actually um, create the method like this and we have our name and our email. Now we're going to actually change this up a bit. Email and we're going to here we're going to write name just so it fits better. Next, we're going to need our strings, one for the URL, of course, like always, and then one for the SQL. Now this time, Unlike create table, we're actually going to write insert into users, which is the same as over here, name and email, which are these, which are going to be these, but these actually are connected to these. This is what they represent. The actual values that we're going to get from over here and over here, we're actually going to insert those when we use our object, our try catch and all of that stuff. Now let's actually do that first. So we're going to use our try and catch statement once again, get our object. Then we're going to set our first index one with the name for right here, which is our name, right? And then the second one, we're going to put in our email and make sure you have your SQL right here. So that way it knows what it's doing. And then we're going to execute update, which actually inserts that data. And we're going to print that out. Since in our new create table, we actually wrote if not exists. That means we can actually run this code over and over with this because it won't actually create a new table because it'll see that there's already a table there. So we're just going to leave that in. 
Now if you open your sample.db, you'll actually see we got our information, our ID, our name, and the email. They're all in there. Now let's run the same code but with different names. Let's run our code. Great, everything went successfully. Let's close the sample.db and let's reopen it. Now as you guys can see, we got more things in there with me. Now finally, let's create a method that'll print out our data. So we're going to call it print out data like this. And let's just create that. And now we're just going to comp comment out these lines of code right here because we don't really need them, especially this because we already have this data already in there. Next, we're going to need our strings. Our URL is the same as always. And then for our SQL, we're actually going to write select ID name email from users. So it goes to the users table inside of this database and it selects the ID name and email, which is all of these things. And we're actually going to get those and print those out. Next, we're going to write our cry statement. So we're going to do a similar thing as always and with our SQL, which is what we're going to actually run. And then inside of here, we're going to use rs.next inside of a while loop. So we're just going to loop through each item inside of our database inside of here because these are like multiple items. We're going to loop through them with a while loop. And then we're actually going to print out these things right here. So rs.getInt ID. So it'll get the ID of the current thing, which is one and then use this for a tab in our console and then print out the name and then the email. And since this is inside of a while loop, it'll keep doing this as long as there's a next one. So it'll print out only these. Now let's run our code and see if it worked. As you guys can see in the console, we got one and then two, the names and their emails. Everything has gone successfully. All right guys, adios.